Yo, what's up everyone? Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today I'm going to bring you all an in-depth review and we're going to take a first-hand look at this wireless tattoo machine by a company called Xnet. This is going to be the Elite Wireless Tattoo Machine. I will leave links in the description below for you so you can go ahead and check it out on your end. So without further ado, let's just dive into this. So upon picking up this machine, you're going to receive it in a box like so. And this is what is on the inside here. So as you can see, it does come in a hard case right here, which will surely protect your investment. And on the top, it looks like what appears to be a brochure of some sort. So as you can see, Xnet Elite Wireless Tattoo Machine. This is going to be what it looks like, I'm assuming. So it does look as though we do get options here. So I'm very excited to take a look at this machine. So feel free to pause right here at any time. Here is the Instagram. You can go ahead and contact them directly. And this is the back right here. Very nice graphics. I'm gonna set that over to the side and we're going to take a look at the actual product. So as you can see, it's a very nice felt case here. It says Xnet right there. And it is, it is a hard felt case. So I just want to point that out there. So as you can see, these are the contents. This is what is inside. It looks as though we have the machine right here. We have the RCA input, which is what this would be. We have an assortment of tools with the different stroke right here, some O-rings and some extra screws in there. And it looks as though this is going to be another battery and two charging cables here, as you see. So let's take a look at the battery. As you can see, it is a wireless battery. Very nice, direct, simple, and straightforward. The buttons feel a little bit loose there, but I'm not too worried about that. Now, what I want to do is we're going to be checking out the, we're gonna wrap the machine here. We're gonna check out the performance, but right now I want to take a first hand look at the cosmetics. And this is the RCA input. And just the fact that it has the ability to switch from RCA to between two different wireless batteries, that's amazing. So you get the RCA input, which means you can use your own external battery. You can use a standard power supply, or you can use the two batteries that it came with. So here is one wireless battery and the machine looks as though it has another. And as you can see, I was correct. The machine does have a wireless battery and this is the Xnet Elite Wireless Tattoo Machine. This is a pin style tattoo machine and it overall, it looks great. I love the entire black look. It's definitely sleek and it feels a quality right off the bat. It is a bit thicker over what I'm used to, which is something that is growing on me. It is also a click grip, which is great. So it does seem like a pretty versatile pin here. And as you can see, we were pushing at 5.5 volts. It had a nice little jump start there. Nice, smooth and consistent. So this machine, the battery goes down from five volts and we go all the way up to 12 volts is what it maxes out at. As you can hear, it's very consistent, very nice. And if you look right here, we can fluctuate in increments of one. So that's great. I'm always looking for, for that, like I prefer for my machines or my batteries to be able to fluctuate in increments of one point ones like that, as opposed to skipping a few. So overall though, it feels consistent. This machine definitely feels great. It's very simple. I'm a big fan of simplistic builds. And this machine looks like it has that. And to switch out the wireless battery and keep in mind, it comes with two. So here's one wireless battery and here is another. So you get two wireless batteries, which is outstanding and you get the wireless input as well. So this is definitely great value for 
the investment. I do feel that this would be a great investment for anyone. We are going to test the performance just to confirm that. And as you can see though, it is a short, you know, short pen style tattoo machine when you put the RCA on there. The wireless batteries give it a little bit extra length, which, which isn't a big deal to me personally. This is the size of the machine right here though, in comparison to my hand. It is a bit thicker over again what I'm used to, but I do already like, and when I say what I am used to, I mean the tattoo machines itself. I'm used to a bit thinner of a tattoo machine. That's why I put a thicker grip. So for this specific machine, I'm not gonna need as much adhesive to get a nice grip going. This assembly seems pretty straightforward. So I would simply remove this part of the machine right here. I could put this into an autoclave machine. I can put this, submerge this right here into a chemical sterilization bath. And I can wipe this down right here with a virucidal solution. As you can see, there is a screw right here that we would need to take this part, uh, take this apart. And I believe that there is electrical components. So I'm gonna put the grip off to the side and try and explain this better. So to sterilize it, I would just approach it with like opticide wipes, super sandy cloths, cavicide wipes, a virucidal solution to go ahead and do what you need it to do as you don't want to submerge or put this into an autoclave machine as you're going to damage the electrical components on the specific RCA input on here as well as your or your battery depending on what you use to clean it. So again, just to reiterate, you're going to want to wipe this down with a virucidal solution don't submerge it don't put this part this part or this part into an autoclave the only part i would put into a machine would be the grip that fully detaches this part right here this is the part that i would put into a machine other than that i'm just going to get some cave aside drop some drops in there a little bit you know mix it around get some wipes and make sure i just wipe down really really good and then you can see this screw right here that you would simply unscrew and that's the inner components of there. That's how you would also change out the stroke wheel as well. It's very, very straightforward, very standard. It's not too complicated at all to actually change out the stroke wheel. It's very easy stuff. I will make an in-depth review and show you all how I do that. But for this video, I want to rather stick to the cosmetics. Well, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and see here. We can just remove this screw on camera. So I can just kind of show you all. So when we do this, this is something that you want to be super careful with. Keep in mind, this is an electrical component, which means there's wires on here connected to the motor inside. So if you were just to yank this off, you're going to yank those wires out. So these are just simple fundamentals that you have to be familiar with prior to unscrewing this right here. And then I'm going to be gentle and kind of loosen this up and pull this off right here as you see that I'm doing. And I don't want to pull these wires off, but as you see, I slid this out like so, and you can see in here that the wires are connected down there to the green top part, which is this. So that's how I am going to approach that. I'm not going to pull this entire thing off. This specific shielding doesn't come off all the way. So I'm going to remove it enough to get enough space in here so that way I can remove this four millimeter stroke wheel and put the other one on, as you can see. That's how you would approach that. That's how you would change that eccentric wheel or that um, specific stroke wheel right there. So that's what I wanted to point out. Be super careful. As you can see, the wires go in there inside. So the wires do go in there. If you pull this piece off right here, if you yank this piece, you're gonna yank these wires and the machine is not gonna work anymore. So I just felt the need to show you that on camera here so that way no one makes that mistake upon when they get their machine. Now, if you're comfortable with that stroke wheel that's in there, then I would just leave it, you know, if or you could adjust and get used to it if you didn't want to change out that stroke wheel, by all means to each their own. Me personally, I'll probably just leave it there and adjust myself accordingly as I don't see anything wrong with a four stroke there but that's that right there so for sterilization it would be very straightforward it would be very very simple just simply wipe it down with again a virucidal solution i love the fact that we do get an rca input as well as the batteries 
However, the only thing is I'm not a big fan of these builds where the motor kind of hides in there like so because of the sterilization process. I want to be able to kind of get inside and wipe everything down or submerge as I need. And I wouldn't be able to do that with this. So therefore, I would give this machine a five stars. But because of the build itself, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving it a five stars. So for that is getting a four stars from me specific. Now, I do love the fact, though, that it does come with two batteries. So that is definitely a two thumbs up based on the performance would determine if I give it, you know, a two thumbs up and an overall five stars or a four stars. But for now, I'm not fully comfortable with the build as it does require a little bit more of, you know, a technical approach to maintain and sterilize maintenance. I mean, in terms of that, it's kind of straightforward here. You know, you have the grip, sterilize this, you can put this into a machine or, you know, sterilize this however you see fit. However, this part of the machine is what you have to worry about. This part is the part that you're going to want to wipe down along with the batteries as well. You get some KVSI, maybe on a Q-tip or some sort of virus out of solution, make sure you get it in there. Very simple stuff, very straightforward. Um, that's how I would approach that. And that's the only downfall. Um, I wish that we had more access to be able to clean in there and stuff like that, but I think we should be good to go either way. As you can see though, it is a nice little short style pen machine. I'm very eager to test the performance, but before I do, I want to get a wireless battery and I want to see how it pushes with a wireless battery. So that's what we are going to do. So I'm going to test it with this little battery right here. I'm going to turn this on. This one has a little jump start, so I'm going to turn it on prior to putting it on the machine. And right now we're running at 5.1 volts and as you see, it attaches with no problem. And it also pushes with no problem. Very smooth, very consistent. Just because like, I'm not, you know, very familiar with the build and the build is not my, you know, preference. That doesn't mean that it's not going to perform because as you see, it's performing. 7.5 volts and we are using the RCA input with a completely different battery over the ones that it came with. So this machine does have truly wireless capabilities and it also has capabilities to use your own third party wireless power supplies or your own standard power supply, which is great. That's why it's gonna get a two thumbs up for me. But overall, I think I am gonna give it a four star solid because of that build in the middle. It's a little bit complicated. It's a little bit more advanced, but I wanted to also demonstrate and show you all that it does run with a power supply here. And this is another third party wireless power supply. Overall though, it feels like a great solid machine. It does feel like a quality machine. Don't get me wrong. This machine definitely feels of quality. These components feel of quality. For this demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the battery that it came with. We're going to be using this battery and we're going to get into the wrapping part of this specific machine. And we're going to see how I would go about wrapping the machine. And then from there, we can get into the performance and test different configurations out. Prior to wrapping the machine, I always like to set my needle depth. So I get a needle that I'm going to use a lot throughout my tattoo, and then I adjust needle depth accordingly. So adjusting needle depth with the XNet wireless, as you can see, is super simple, very responsive, not difficult at all, very, very straightforward. This machine definitely feels great right here. It feels natural though. The weight is very balanced and evenly distributed. It doesn't feel too heavy and I'm getting used to the, the width of the machine. So I'm going to set the depth of the needle there. And then when I do that, I'm going to proceed to get a blue slip like so. And I always open up the tip right here just to make it a bit easier for the machine to go in like so. And then I always make sure that I kind of pinch this going up that way so that way the button has slack here. I don't make a hole in it, I just pinch it a little bit so that way the plastic stretches and the button has room to go up and down right here. And that is pretty much it. That is exactly how I wrap my machines. You can tape this closed, you can put an adhesive wrap around should you choose to do so. That's how I'm going to approach this. So you do want a barrier over your machine simply because we can't put this part into an autoclave or any machine of some sort to sterilize it. So put a barrier around the machine. You can even get a like a saran wrap and wrap that around and just twist it up top here, close that. 
that'll work out great as well i'm going to take some sinra tattoo adhesive wrap and i will leave links to all of this stuff right here in the description below so you can check it out and then I'm not going to add any napkins because this width of the machine is naturally thicker already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap some adhesive wrap around to create cushion and build up some cushion here. Just a bit, not too, too much. I'm not trying to add more cushion to what's, I'm not trying to add more width to what's there. I'm just trying to add cushion. So. As you see, just add the adhesive wrap, really easy, really, um, really easy adhesive wrap to work with. And as you can hear though, it's a very nice and consistent machine. Very simple to wrap. Overall, it is a great machine. I don't have any issues or complaints about this machine yet. Um, again, though, I'm just, you know, the, up part, the upper part of the body kind of gets me there. The fact that we can't put that into any machines to sterilize it, but that is what it is. It won't take away from the review. What we're gonna do is dive into the performance and we're gonna see how it performs so we can give you an overall better opinion on this specific machine. So I have the real skin scratch skin right here that we're going to be using for this demonstration. We're gonna be doing it somewhere right here in the middle. For this demonstration, we're going to start with a rain nine round shader. So we're going to push an assortment of different needles. We're going to push round liners. We're going to push round shaders. We're going to push round mags and a little bit more or whatever we have available to us right here. So as you can see, here is a rain cartridge and I'm putting in a completely different configuration and it goes in with ease. No problems at all. It locks in. No issues. As you can see, machine is nice, consistent, and quiet. Very, very nice. So I'm going to pull some lines and then I'm gonna bring you up close per usual so that way you can see the Xnet Elite right here, wireless tattoo machine in action. It's a bit too much ink so I can't see what I'm doing. So right now I'm pushing at 7.5 volts and the machine doesn't feel like it's at 7.5 volts and it just feels like it's pushing at a softer voltage but it's only because when I'm pushing and pulling or when I'm pulling these lines rather there's a good amount of give so it feels almost like a brush. I find the dermis and I'm able to just adjust my hand speed and to my voltage there and I'm able to get nice saturated lines as you see it didn't take me long to adjust at all. Let me actually bring you up close so you can see this specific machine perform up close here. Okay, so we are up close right here. I'm getting a little bit more ink and we're gonna continue to pull some lines with this standard nine round shader using the Xnet Elite LE wireless tattoo machine. And as you see though, it's definitely pulling lines and I'm not going to switch the voltage. I'm going to leave it at 7.5 and I'm going to adjust my hand speed accordingly. Just so that I can get the point across in its performance. And as you see though, every time they're nice, clean, smooth, saturated lines. Pull a little bit longer of a line here. And we are using real skin, practice skin. I made a full review. I recently picked up six pounds of real skin, practice skin. I made a review recently on that as well. So be sure to check that out. But as you see though, very nice, consistent lines. When the lines become inconsistent like that, it's because I didn't grab enough ink when I went back to get some. So what I can say is this Xnet Elite wireless tattoo machine is definitely capable of pushing larger configurations like round shaders as you see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get a Trex seven round liner and we're gonna push a round liner configuration over a round shader and we're gonna see how the Xnet Elite wireless tattoo machine pushes round liners. So again, this is going to be the Trex seven round liner. Very nice. Let's go ahead and ink up there.
was very smooth. Now this machine right here, the performance is allowing the machine to grow on me very quick. It's definitely not a bad machine at all, especially for the price. So if you're looking for like a great budget machine, something that is pretty versatile and that gives you wireless capabilities as well as, you know, standard, po or standard power supply capabilities, I would recommend checking this out. Um, can't go wrong with the investment. Comes well protected. It is a solid machine from what I'm doing right here from how I'm demonstrating. Overall, the machine is definitely solid. I'm going to pull a little circle, just pack a little a bit of, a bit of black here with this configuration. It's actually very nice so this machine performs wonderfully so the performance kind of evens out the playing field so it's, it's going to be hard for me to give this a four stars and it's going to be difficult for me to give it a five stars so what i'm going to do is i'm definitely giving this machine a 4.5 and the only reason why it went down half a star is because of the build the build is not truly simplistic to me so that's why i took it down a bit however the performance makes up for that because it looks as though this machine is going to be able to handle anything that I throw at it. As you see, we did round liners, round shaders, we packed a little bit of black as well. We're using different needle, uh, different needle configurations as well as different needles, and we're getting consistent results across the board here. So as you see, seven round liner pushing wonderfully with ease what i want to get into is a three round liner and we're going to test out some shading here so for this one i'm going to be using a so long double zero three round liner which is probably one of my favorite needle configurations and we're going to drop the voltage down from 7.5 all the way down to five so we're taking this down to the lowest voltage and as you can hear you can barely hear anything minimal vibration like there's hardly put on the table see like there's like so like you know there's very low vibration so much so that it doesn't even transfer to the table so i just wanted to point that out though very low vibration this is probably one of the lowest vibrating machines that i've used this far and as you can see it's fully going to be capable of stippling a lot of this comes down to your technical approach and capability However, as you can see though, it's definitely going to be nice for stippling. It feels like a brush-like motion. As you can see, it's very smooth. I like the way that looks. I'm just using the very tip of my needle, making sure that I only apply micro increments of pressure. Very cool, very nice, very straightforward. I, I love the way that this machine feels especially with stippling it feels great with stippling it feels like a brush it doesn't feel hard at all and as you can see it's a very smooth transition i'm just messing around there having some fun with it so it's definitely nice i'm going to try a little bit of dot work as well I've also done reviews on this so long needle as well, so you can check that out as well. So as you can see though, it's definitely capable of dotting. So this is all around a little workhorse of a machine. It's definitely doing great. Now I'm going through these specific demos because these are little fundamentals that I use in my tattoo. So in my tattooing styles, like with when I do Mandela's, I use a lot of round shaders. I use a lot of round liners and a lot of stippling and dot work. So these are just fundamentals that make up the tattoos that I do. Um, a majority of the tattoos I do consist of stipple shading. They will have a little bit of dot work in there, a lot of dense lining. So that's why I choose to test the machines out using little tests like this. So that way we can see up close and see the performance and get an idea of what to expect upon investing into this machine for ourselves. 
this is overall a great machine though this could be great for practice this can be great for tattooing i can see this machine being useful to a lot of people especially because of the price point as well it doesn't break the bank you get a powerful machine that handles a lot of, you know essentially anything that you throw at it what i'm going to do is i'm going to push a round mag here shortly and i'm going to test out how it packs the black here to kind of seal the deal with this machine so we can test out the performance as well in terms of packing black so as you can see though very nice very consistent i'm going to switch out to a round mag and then we are going to pack some black here One thing that I want to point out is, as you can see with the rain, this is going to be a 17 round mag. We're pushing at five volts even, and it's still pushing with no ease. There's no problems at all. I'm gonna stop the machine and show you all that it's pushing with no ease. For this, so I'm going to take it up to about 7.5 volts to pack some black here. And that's what the voltage that we are going to use to test the packing of black. take me long to figure out if the machine will be good and perform or not and I can genuinely say that this machine is definitely a, a good performer it is definitely a great machine overall it definitely does everything that I threw at it and as you can see it probably took me like 15 or so seconds maybe less I don't know give or take and I saturated that little spot air that little area with black I wouldn't have to go over this again and the ink would have stuck and stayed there for life so it's definitely capable of packing black not difficult at all again a lot of that comes down to technical approach and ability but i just wanted to show you all that it's definitely capable of packing black so the xnet elite wireless tattoo machine is definitely getting a thumbs up from me i'm going to give it a thumbs up and a four stars and i will go ahead and tell you why the reason why i'm going to give it a thumbs up and four stars is because it basically does everything. Um, I wish I would have been able to give it five stars. However, I wouldn't have felt truly comfortable giving it a full-fledged five stars because of the simplistic build. For me, for those of you who have watched my other reviews, you, you'll you know that I'm a very big fan of simplistic builds. In fact, that's one of the things that I look for upon getting machines. And this build isn't necessarily simplistic, which is why it went down one star from me. However, and this is a big however, the fact that it does come with two batteries and the RCA capability takes that four stars up to 4.5. Now, do I think that the XNet Elite Wireless Tattoo Machine is a great investment? I definitely do feel that it is a great investment overall. It's a great investment for anyone for many reasons. If you're needing a backup machine, if you're looking for a machine to start out, uh, just it, all in general, if you're looking for an affordable machine to have multiple of, this is definitely a way to go. And here is why. The machine offers a standard power capabilities, which means you can plug it into a standard power source. It, off it also offers wireless capabilities, which means you can go truly wireless. You could switch that out on the fly. You can go ahead and autoclave the grip. You can wipe down the entire machine for sterilization. Um, the build is a little bit more advanced. It's not really too user friendly. However, considering all of the other variables, this machine overall is definitely great. It packs black, it pushes round shaders, it pushes round liners, it pushes smaller configurations. It goes low in the five volt range and it goes all the way up to 12 volts. So we definitely get a versatile machine, especially for the price. The fact that this specific XNet Elite Wireless Tattoo Machine comes with the RCA input as well as two wireless batteries giving us the ability to switch between a standard power supply or go truly wireless 
is going to take that four stars up back to 4.5. Now, here is why I'm going to be giving it a thumbs up and a 4.5 overall, though. Now, overall, besides the non-simplistic build, the machine performs. It is pushing round liners with ease. It is pushing round shaders with ease. It is pushing black and packing black with ease. It stippled and did dot work with ease. And, and granted, these are minor demonstrations. However, if I'm doing large scale tattoos, the performance would have still felt the same. So these demonstrations do definitely get my points across and it definitely does show the capabilities of this specific machine. But that is it. That's pretty much how I feel about this machine. We push round liners, we push different needle configurations, we push round shaders, round mags, uh, you know, super small three round liner configurations and everything was fine. The, sh the machine itself is super consistent. It definitely feels of quality. I do like this machine overall. That is my review. That is how I feel about this specific Xnet Elite Wireless Tattoo Machine. Now, if I didn't touch base on anything specific throughout this video that you may have wanted to know, please feel free to drop a comment below and I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. If you're not, be sure to give me a follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok as I would genuinely appreciate your support. I do have social medias all under the same name at Daniel Yuck, D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. I would genuinely appreciate the support. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me as I will be bringing more videos like this. Thank you for tuning in yet again. You have a great day.